After winning the vote in 1920, American women were now into a new political arena, sexual politics. And one woman's pain of fighting in this arena is tonight's pain of progress. Our story's heroine, Margaret Sanger, a woman who helped shape our world more than any modern politician could ever hope to, was born in 1879. In 1900, Margaret enrolled into the White Plains Hospital as a nurse. Then after two years, she gave up her studies and continued to work as a visiting nurse on the Poor East Side of New York as she slowly became involved in socialist politics. Margaret Sanger's growing feminist views and her experience as a nurse led her to writing a few columns, What Every Mother Should Know and What Every Girl Should Know, for the magazine New York Call. They talked openly about sexual issues and caused outrage with many readers, but not all. Some of them agreed, and soon, thanks to Margaret, many, many more would as well. But for now, Margaret Sanger was arrested under the strict anti-obscenities laws on the books in the United States at that time. This would not be the last time Margaret would find herself in trouble with the law. Witnessing the horrors of the backstreet abortionist and those of self-inflicted abortion too many times, Margaret continued her efforts to promote birth control information through her writing and was again wanted for arrest in 1914 under the same anti-obscenities laws. But Margaret didn't give up. Instead, she went to Europe, where she made some new friends, and she learned a few things about birth control as well. Now, contraceptives were fine in most of Europe, and Margaret Sanger had a wealthy friend across the pond willing to help. Her name was Catherine McCormick. Now, Catherine, an American living in Europe, was a suffragist, philanthropist, and heiress to a vast family fortune, and as such was more than able and willing to help Margaret assist these poor American women. So Catherine McCormick bought up diaphragms, sewed them into the hems of garments being shipped to America, and into the hands of Margaret Sanger to distribute. 1916. Now, back in America, Margaret Sanger opened a clinic, a birth control clinic the first one in America, and it was in Brooklyn, New York. Her first day saw well over 100 women show up for help and advice. Not bad in anyone's book. She was soon arrested, again, under America's strict anti-obscenities laws, both for the printed information she provided and for distributing the diaphragms as well. The clinic was closed. It was open for nine days. Margaret was offered a light sentence if she promised not to break these laws again, but our heroine would not give up this fight. Margaret Sanger fought on as her trial was bringing big publicity and spurring birth control activism all across the United States. In 1917, Margaret Sanger started publishing a monthly periodical, Birth Control Review. She published the first issue while still in jail from her issues trying to run the clinic she had opened in Brooklyn. Miss Sanger kept her role as editor-in-chief until 1928, where she turned it over to the American Birth Control League. In 1921, Margaret founded that said American Birth Control League, and it really helped grow her middle-class supporters in a great way. In 1922, Margaret Sanger worked in Asia, helping to bring the idea of birth control to many areas. She helped to open a successful family planning clinic in Shanghai while she was there as well. With physicians now able to distribute contraceptive information to women in America, thanks to victory in Margaret's legal appeal in 1918, she established the Clinical Research Bureau in 1923 making it the first legal birth control clinic in the United States staffed entirely by female doctors and social workers. During the 1920s, Margaret Sanger also authored several books greatly helping to improve America's attitude and acceptance of birth control. Her words were widely circulated and gained her and her ideas about birth control 
and family planning much more credence with the American population as well. In 1929, Margaret Sanger was asked by New York's Urban League to open a clinic in Harlem, New York. She duly opened it staffed with black doctors. Margaret was well known to despise racism in all forms. In 1929, Margaret Sanger also formed the National Committee on Federal Legislation for Birth Control. When this endeavor failed to achieve its goal of bringing these issues to the government properly, she decided to raise the stakes and, knowing full well it to be an illegal act, ordered contraceptives from China in 1932. Contraceptives that were confiscated by authorities and again, Margaret Sanger was off to court. In 1936, Margaret Sanger was again in court for an appeal in her previous case, and this time it led to the courts overturning a previous decision. Now, doctors could legally obtain contraceptives, and duly, in 1937, the American Medical Association adopted contraception as a normal medical service and added it to the medical curriculum as well. As such, Margaret thought the battle was over, but history had other ideas for the heroine of this story. 1937 and Margaret Sanger becomes chairman of the newly formed Birth Control Council of America, again spearheading the charge for women's birth control in America. She continued these efforts and slowly over time decided that she was going to pull back from any real heavy activism, feeling that it was spurring on on its own. But in 1950, she again became a pivotal figure in the fight for reliable birth control for women. She encouraged her friend from earlier in our story, Catherine McCormick, to provide funding for a biologist, Gregory Pincus, and his research into something that would change the world for women forever, the birth control pill. The birth control pill came on the market and gave women real choice in life, and most have never looked back. The modern age of women climbing the ladder and taking charge in life can be in some ways all traced back to one feisty girl on a mission, Margaret Sanger. In 1965, a legal ruling in America paved the way for the legalization of birth control, something Margaret Sanger lived to see. She passed away in 1966 in Fishkill, New York, happily living to see her life's dream and work become reality. Margaret Sanger suffered much in life at the hands of others for her belief in what was right, and her pain is the pain of progress. Willing to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others do. 